All right, well, new character, posh soiree. No demon ladies in sight. No idea what happened to our girl. And new stuff. All right, there's our pretty lady Hannah. So. Yeah, I don't think I had any affection with Hannah, actually, <laughs> when I was Isabella. Let me see. No. All right. And... Journal. Profiles. Hannah. Hannah Wright Nay Evans. Birth date April 30th. Taurus, 31 years old. 5 foot 7. Heiress, former finance manager. British. Anglican. Masters in business administration. Major in accounting. Likes... I don't know how to say that. What? Willabase? I'm sorry, I don't know French. Dogs, fashion, parties and dancing, the beach, children, iconic women, charity and math. Maybe I'm gonna get along better with Hannah than I thought originally. Hmm. Of the Luxburn upper classes, Hannah is used to living a life of luxury. Absent parents made her crave for attention though, something she gained from her private tutors and nannies instead. It was never enough, however. She studied hard in order to make her parents proud, going into business so that she could work alongside them. The challenge in her otherwise privileged life was certainly a thrill for her at the very least. She had many suitors dating different men and women, but it was through work that she met Luke. It was love at first sight for her. All that sweet. Upon her parents' death, Luke proposed to her. Sus. That was the move that led to the merging of Wright Enterprise and Evans Incorporated and her subsequent retirement. Their seven-year marriage is strained, but Hannah tries her best to make it work. Interesting. Um, I want to look for... Okay, I mean, we're over half affection. It's not so, so strange. Maybe we can make it work. Hannah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do my best for you and Luke. Although I'm majorly sus on the fact that he proposed to you only after your parents died. Mm, married for money, maybe? I'm gonna keep an eye on that boy. It is far too easy to get them to pay attention, enraptured. They hang on to my every word and follow my every move. All of it would have been stifling had I not grown used to such stares. Most are respectful. Some are hostile, if we are honest. Is this the royal we? And a few are downright inappropriate. After all, I am... Hannah Wright! Hi, who are you? There's a moment of agitation as a familiar, but less than welcome face approaches me with a suggestive smirk on his face. Of course, I have to keep a benevolent smile and greet him as I greet any good friend. After all, this man can turn heads, being famous in his own right. Officer Lee! What a pleasant surprise. I didn't think you'd have the time to attend tonight's party. He is more Luke's friend than mine, really, and I'm quite sure I only invited his wife. Ouch. Much like I am only friends with the Chief Inspector because of Luke, Luke is only friends with Rochelle because of me. Unlike how I treated Lee, however, Luke would never hid his animosity for the Lee matriarch. It was an odd sort of friendship where we would have awkward double dates. I don't even recall his first name. It started with an N, I think. I might be wrong. Aside from being Chief Inspector of Luxburn Police, his wife, Rochelle Lee Ne Vance, owns a general electronics company. Fridges and freezers, mostly. Oh, I always have time for my favorite social art couple. Might I say, you look positively ravishing tonight. If you could say it in a less suggestive tone, that would be smashing. I see the husband isn't with you. Oh gosh, I really hate this guy. The way he eyes me up is enough to make my skin crawl. I just wish Luke is here to fend off the more... unseemly of our peers. You know the ones. Men who are just a bit too friendly. Staring too long at my assets and getting close just because my husband is not here. And to think they have the gall to do this at my own party. In my own house, if I might add. Oh, right. Okay, so this is where you lived before you bought 
the mansion. I'm guessing. Yes, because they haven't moved in yet. They're getting it renovated. Gotcha. It's pretty nice. But like any high society woman worth her salt, I know how to handle it with grace and dignity. I... I suppose you are looking pleasant as well. Luke's busy with work, unfortunately. Michelle isn't here. Hmm, a shame. I do hope he isn't causing you much trouble. That husband of yours can be a bit tough sometimes, acting like he's still some young bachelor. Speak for yourself. The wife sends her regards and her apologies, but something came up with a doctor and she needed to attend to it. You know her being pregnant and all. I'm glad you decided to come here instead of be with your wife. We make small talk. Rather, I'm forced to do so, as he would not leave my side after finding his place there. Much to my ch chagrin, I've been extricated from the few who flock in hopes of flattering, for I can tolerate them far better than Lee. He is a nice enough person, and I adore his wife, who is obviously the brains behind the two. Ouch. But there is... something unsettling about him. I do not trust him as much as I want to. Kinda bad when he's the chief of police. He regales to me tales of the Luxburn Police Department. A different affair to the usual gossip I am privy to, and, though I loathe to admit it, is interesting nonetheless. I expect the topic of business to die out quickly, which would be understandable enough due to the confidential nature of his work. But, oh boy, was I wrong. So, wearing civvies, I steal and drive off with one of the police mobiles, right? In the mirror, I see the new tent chasing on foot and screaming about theft. The look on his face was priceless when I parked in the garage. Oh my. You made him chase you all the way home for a prank. What did Rochelle have to say about that? Rochelle has a strange love and hate affair with Lee. He is a married man who did not grow up past his early 20s, judging by the way he acts. Surprisingly enough, they've been married for a good 20 years. Well, I mean, that says something at least. A lifetime, if you compare it to my marriage of seven years with Luke. I, on the other hand, well... Luke is no Lee. I should be happy about that, I suppose. Although my darling did have his moments. Hey, the wife pulled my hair and gave me a good talking to, though. Besides, we live in a flat a block away, so it wasn't much of a grand chase. Weren't you living in a house near the countryside? Move for work, you know. Or you probably don't. Ouch. No. I don't. But a flat in downtown. I suppose if that's what you like. Nice. Oh, it's alright. Hate that tiny place. No matter how convenient it can be for work. 55 square yards are not enough when you need to get away from the wife. I wouldn't mind a place away from the city. Even started looking at the ads. I spied an interesting lot, actually. Heard it was finally put up for sale. Or that something mansion. You know the one. The one with all the ghost stories. Oh, is this back in time a little bit, then? Before they went and checked out the mansion. That's interesting. I know what he's talking about. There are really only a few urban legends around here. It's... The Ermagerd Mansion? Ermagerd. Ah, uh, that's the one. Uh, worthy <laughs> of a king it is. I'd buy it myself, but Rochelle would only gripe if I brought it up to her. Not to mention all the expenses a place like that. It would be a real fixer-upper. You also have to find someone willing to work there with how superstitious people can be. If it becomes a problem, just hire someone to do an exorcism. No big deal, right? Actually, I do know of someone who could be up to the task. You remember the Ludgates party at their Christchurch summer residence? Of course. It was an excellent soiree. Everything was so classy, too. Such good taste. Oh, that place was a pigsty until they hired out this interior designer and they turned it into a bloody palace. <laughs> she worked for the Exodus for their apartment in Soho too, and they recommended her when we were looking up pieces for our beach house in Porto Colom. I think I have a business card, right? It no, I must have left it in my other jacket. Anyway, she's called, uh, what's her name? Uh, Mikola, uh, Marianne, I believe, yes. Okay, so you recommended Marianne to Hannah and Luke. But truly, if anyone were to get that place in McCullough, well, they'd be the envy and the talk of the town. Well, if you put it that way, I might just snatch it up for myself. 
This place was starting to feel a bit small lately anyway. Yes, absolutely cramped it is. Sure, a three-story penthouse might not fit the definition of small for some people. Most people. Okay, maybe a lot of people. Okay, so you're not completely uh, d <laughs> torn away from reality. That's good. But it isn't big enough to have grand parties in. As it is, I only invited about 30 people to this one, and it already feels cramped in here. It certainly would be nice if I didn't have to ride an elevator up and down several floors before I can get anywhere as well. All Luke's words and not mine. Besides, I have been looking for a good anniversary gift. Luke might like this one. Where is he anyway? Luke. Hello. We have a journal update. Timeline. Okay, we're right back at the beginning. This is actually before we even... Yeah, this is a few days before where we started with Isabella. Interesting. Hannah Wright threw a party in their penthouse at the Cache. The city's most powerful were seen, including Chief Inspector Harvey Lee, so not start with an N, of the Luxburn Police Department. From him, the socialite heard of the Ermengarde Mansion's upcoming open house and of the interior designer Marianne McCulloch. Luke is dressed to the nines, as he usually is, and he looks ready for whatever the day will throw at him. His butler and valet wait at his side, just in case he isn't as ready as he looks. Oh, sure, that is normal. What is confusing me is the fact that he is on his way out of the penthouse, considering we won't have anywhere to go until much later. Where are you going? Oh, she sounds so tired. I am to attend the Triad Autumn Tasting. I do believe I informed you of this two weeks ago. <laughs> Sorry. Yes. And might I remind you that I had stricken that off your schedule? Because one, the doctor told you to stop consuming so much alcohol. Ouch. And two, I informed you a few days ago about the open house we are going to attend in its place. Ouch. I've even found this marvelous interior designer, Mary Ann McCullough. It's a three and a half hour drive to Cardiff. I don't have time for this. Okay, sure, you could drink a lot of alcohol in three and a half hours, but... This is like that little party you threw all over again. You don't inform me of it, and you expect me to stay and be a gracious host when I have business elsewhere. Elsewhere. <sighs> you know how I operate, Hana. Unless this was penciled in, I am sticking to my schedule. If I may intrude, the madam is correct. Your physician did insist you moderate your drinking. Unless you wish to incur acute pancreatitis. Oh, yeah, pancreatitis. No wonder you should stay away from alcohol. Also, Johans, I already like you. And you did have this open house penciled in last Wednesday morning. I really like you. Bullocks. I don't remember doing so. Oh, bullocks. Well, you did. While very hungover, in fact. He did. Moaned about me being too loud, but gave in after some pushing. Perhaps that was a bit too cruel and manipulative of me, but... Whose side are you on? Come on, Luke. You promised we'd do whatever I want this weekend. Gordon Bennett, fine. <laughs> I am giving this house tour of yours a chance. Gordon Bennett. But if it proves to be a waste of time, I am going to Cardiff and you are going to take a cab home. Damn. Are we clear? It's just a bit of a husband and wife tit for tad, isn't it? All couples have their arguments. Once the honeymoon phase is over, as they seem to call it, reality sets in that you and your partner might not always see eye to eye. Perhaps it has been the years. It's only been seven. Seven of them is nothing to scoff at. True. I just cannot bloody believe I agreed to this. I was really looking forward to the triad tasting. Though sometimes I think it's something a bit more than just simple disagreements, and I have to stop myself from wondering where we went wrong. There's always the triad Christmas tasting in Manchester next month, and that'll only be an hour and a half drive. Have I been neglectful? Have I offended? Have I acted shamefully? Yes, but Cardiff. I love that she's having this internal <laughs> debate with herself, and meanwhile Luke's like, but the alcohol. Certainly any problem can be discussed. 
As long as he doesn't turn me away. Well, there goes my good mood. Are you happy now, Hana? Why must he treat me this way? Hmm. Yeah, I don't have enough on you guys as a couple yet. I don't really know... Like, I don't know enough about Luke to know his personality. But I feel like you guys are both tough. Like, you're both very tough people. And it kind of sounds like you've been getting your way lately, Luke? I don't know. I think... Hannah, defend yourself. I want to see how, what his reaction is to you standing up for yourself. If for nothing else, idle curiosity. Yes! I am very happy, Luke. Because for once in a very long time, we are doing what I want. Moment of truth. He liked it! Okay. Alright. Boy likes a girl who stands up for herself. I can respect that. I'm ecstatic. Understood. Damn. And this would be perfect if you stop acting like a child who needs their nappy changed. Yes, call him out. We will be leaving after lunch for the Ermengarde Mansion. You are going to park your rear in the car and keep mum. And you are going to behave during the tour. Wow, go get him, Hannah. Needless to say, Luke looks a bit shocked at my little outburst. He opened and closed his mouth a few times, struggling to reply, before he crosses his arms to look like... Well, a moping child. Any more rules for this little excursion of yours, your highness? Oh, don't even pretend to be upset. You liked that she stood up for herself. No wine. Nice. No wine? <gasps> Unacceptable! <laughs> I am already not allowed to the tasting, and you would deprive me of that simple pleasure? If I see you take one sip today, I will put the stocks under lock and key. Do you understand me? Dang. Don't forget the bottles he keeps in his dresser. Thank you, Johans. Whose side are you on? <laughs> I freaking adore Luke's voice actor, though. Oh my goodness, he is killing it. How many times in one day can you ask that? As many times as I need you, traitor. Yay, Johans is on my side. The ride to the mansion is quiet, with Luke having stared out the window the entire way, not paying attention to anything around him. Meanwhile, I am conflicted. I don't know if I should apologize for changing his plans like that. But by the time we arrive at the mansion and I see his eyes light up in genuine interest, apologizing is the last thing on my mind. Alright, now we're caught up to where we started with Isabella. The whole affair with the Ermengarde mansion is certainly, um interesting experience. The place had been renovated and restored by the owners to what they claimed to be acceptable standards. Gosh, snobby or what? What exactly is your idea of high renovation standards? Fashion words things. The mansion itself looks like something befitting a fairy tale or a period piece. It is tastefully decorated and, with a little bit of love and attention, I'm sure it can be a place Luke and I can call home. And the number of other prospective buyers that have come from the powerful and wealthy of Luxburn certainly did not disappoint, marking this estate as prime property. The Lees are amongst the group who went with the Rose Woman, and I saw a few other notable faces, though I did not really feel like mingling. Unfortunately for every one of them, the Wrights are interested in buying. Wheel and Woe achievement unlocked. wonder what that means. It's so weird seeing Isabella, like, as an actual standing sprite now. This is so awesome. Oh, I just remembered Rose is dead, too. Oh, no. I gotta see Rose for a little bit. Uh, my heart. What's been bugging my mind, however, is that Isabel. What is her problem? I still don't quite understand what is happening. No wonder Rose was concerned about Isabel with her looking like that. One moment she is scrambling to give us the paperwork to finalize the sale. Then she is panicking over some sort of prank letter or another. Dear me, is Isabel alright? It is apparent with the way she shakes and by the pallor of her skin, something has really shaken her up. Isabella, do you need me to call that ambulance? 
I am worried, but it will be best if she is attended to by someone more familiar to her, like her partner. Oh, that's interesting. Hannah was actually genuinely concerned for her. That's good. But even then, the girl refuses Rose's offered drink and looks just about ready to make a run for it. No, I'm just feeling a bit out of it. Excuse me. I'll be back. I just need to catch my breath. And she does so, just as I predicted, and her partner follows like a concerned mother. There is an awkward air among us as we are left in the wake of... whatever that was. The others murmur and gossip with each other, speaking of the poor daft girl and telling the tale to whoever was not audience of the act in the first place. It doesn't take too long for the woman, Rose, to return and pull us aside into the study for what I rightfully assume is damage control. Ooh, nice study. Man, you really do look like the old owner of the house, though, with the blonde hair, Luke. He's right behind you. Rose invites Marianne in, too, hoping to apologize to her as well. But the woman refuses, saying she is not one of her clients anyway. That leaves myself, Rose, and Luke. The last, all too eager to make himself comfortable in a study he's no doubt already claimed as his own. I can't apologize enough about what just happened. Please forgive Isabella. She's been under a lot of pressure lately. She's young and all those rumors about this being haunted just got to her head. And it must be this terrible heat, too. Not a drop of rain for days now. Are you sure it is wise to just let her go like that? Where is the poor dear? She might get hurt. I'm really starting to like Anna. She's more likely to hurt somebody else, given what just happened. I told her to sit down and take a break. Already rang someone to pick her up, too. Oh, did you call Ash? That might be for the best, dear. But please, we're here to talk about the mansion, yes? Why, I absolutely adore it! Don't you, Luke? Some of the rooms will certainly have to be repurposed. We want to change the appliances and have Marianne lead on the decor, but the whole thing is just lovely. I guess. It's certainly a lot roomier than our penthouse. Exactly! Lots of space for guests, parties, a lot of room for little ones to run around too. Oh. What do you got planned, Hannah? Let's not discuss that right now, Buttercup. <laughs> <laughs> Poor Luke. Anyway, I do think it would be a shame to let this mansion slip past us. Okay, he's on board. But you haven't even finished touring the house. Well, we like what we've seen. I am making her job easier for her, am I not? No need for loans or long price negotiations. We can just sign a contract and close the deal. Really? You'd think the woman will be more happy about an easy sale. I know how these estate agents worked, how long they had to wait, and how much they had to spend even just for a single sale. Why, she should be jumping for joy by now. I'm sure the commission on this mansion is nothing to sneeze at, even if she has to split it with the Isabel girl. Huh, do you think we could have horses here? Yes. Yes, those do sound nice, love. Anyway, if anyone else is interested in buying this property, I assure you that I'm able and willing to give a better offer. I... A vineyard would be nice. Or maybe a... He's already hmm. making plans. And we do reward our people quite generously, Rose. So, if I were you, I would start on that paperwork. Helicopter pad. <laughs> you are such a little kid. I pause. And there's a small moment of complete silence where Rose and I just stare incredulously at Luke. It is an unspoken understanding, a rule, between the two of us that we have to put on an act. With our social standing, where image matters, it is also important to avoid making enemies. And to follow this rule is an easy feat for me. From youth, I have been the well-trained social butterfly, gracious and graceful. Luke, on the other hand... Oh, wait, what, Luke? No, what? <laughs> Whatever would we need a helipad for? Well, he likes to play the fool sometimes, even if he is anything but... As he throws me a wry smile, I shake my head and beckon Rose over. This is to be our home, and there is nothing she or anyone else can do to change my mind. This is a place that speaks of power and importance, and at the same time of safety and comfort. 
Perhaps we can even have our family here. There is definitely no better gift than this for our special date. Why, everything here is absolutely wonderful. Ugh. I was in the middle of swallowing. That snow painting, is it? Well, except for this ugly painting in the study. It looks like a bad fake of an Edvard Munch painting. Probably not saying that right. Probably Edvard Munch or something. Here's the deal. I'm willing to pay 10% higher than your listing price. If anyone tries to outbid us, just add another 5%. Damn. I doubt anyone can, of course. Or, you know what? Just add 15% to the listing price and we can sign all the paperwork now. I guess, if that's what you want. That won't be any trouble. I don't have all the papers now. Didn't think this would be a quick sell. I'll have copies sent to you so you can look over them. And if you'd still like to finish the rest of the tour with Isabella's group, you're more than welcome to. No, I think we're good here. We'd appreciate a private tour of the place a lot more, I think. All right. Should I let Marianne in, then? Marianne? Oh, right! She's been waiting outside the study this whole time, hasn't she? I'll need to have a little chat with her to move this little pro mansion project forward. Please just a little, do. Just a little project. Hey, girl. There's a look of apprehension when the other woman enters the study. Yet, like a professional, I see the moment when she steals herself and masks her worry. Admirable. Or admirable. We have this project, then? Did you see the painting, too? Of course! Will you be needing anything from us? Having the floor plans would be a great start, just so that I can look at them beforehand. And if you could tell me when you're available for a meeting so that I can include it in my calendar? Oh, is a meeting really all that necessary, Marianne? I guess we can send Johans to help you out. You two can start by getting rid of this ugly painting. Please stop showing that. A hush falls upon the room at my request. What painting? And lo and behold, the painting is gone. In a, its place, a mirror stands, which leaves me to look at my own confused expression. Odd. Well, no matter. I'm sure it's fine. Back to the topic at hand. Marianne, dear, we are simply far too busy to meet up. I love the, like, um, sudden changes in music. <laughs> it's so, like, eh. Or perhaps maybe I should... Come on, help a girl out. Help the Irish lass out, free up your schedule. But I guess we can free up a day to meet with you. Yeah, there we go. Nice, nice. I don't really need another maudlin Monday reading about Maury anyway. The book club can function without me for one day. What time shall we be seeing each other? How does lunch sound? Besides, my house has a higher priority over book club. Why, we can hold the next meeting in this place! Surely, the beauty and grandeur of it all will inspire spirited and lively debates about whether modern-day writers could match up to the classics. I might as well clear up the rest of my week to handle whatever affairs buying this mansion requires of me. Any social activity can be put off until the Ermengarde, or rather, the Wright Mansion's great debut. I'll have my fill of great parties and gatherings, especially when I organize them myself. That sounds good. Although, with a project of this scope, we might need most of the day to tackle your concerns. A more thorough inspection of the place is also preferable. I like this girl. She wants to be thorough. Breakfast, then! It's a date. Yay! Breakfast date. It's really not. Oh! Have you fallen for Hannah, Marianne? All right. Monday. Ten o'clock sharp. We'll see you then. Actually, Marianne suggested that we meet at nine, but who is even awake at that unholy hour? I really like Hannah now. <laughs> Girl after my own heart. Huh. I was so ticked at her for not remembering Isabella's name properly. And now that I'm actually her, I'm like, I like this girl. I was lucky enough to wake up this morning before Luke went all the way to Cardiff. 
We say our goodbyes, shake hands, and make it clear without outright saying it that we now own this house. By the time we left the mansion ground, sunset is almost upon us. So, you really want to buy this place then? That's a bit of a big impulse buy, even coming from you. <laughs> Not that I'm complaining. Uh, yeah, I was gonna say, Mr. Helipad Man. I feel elation when I hear those words from him. It's not every day one is able to please someone like Luke. He gives away false flattery to sway those who starve for his attention and approval. But in the privacy of closed doors, he would often express his grievances. He neither censored himself in front of me nor spared me from his criticism. You have been saying the Pentas was getting a bit too small for you. Happy anniversary! Yay! Oh. That time of the year already? Ugh. Luke, how could you say that? Oh! <laughs> he forgot about it last year, too. I understand that he's a busy man, but... Is that why you want to buy it? Yes. You don't like it? I do. But? But I remember you used to talk about how you wanted to live next to the beach. Oh, that's kind of sweet, actually. Botany Bay, Kent. I remember the sea, water that stretched on for miles and miles as far as the eyes can see. As a kid, I loved our beach trips, swimming all day as much as I could. I really love this girl. I was a well-behaved child, and the only time I was ever truly difficult was when I refused to get out of the waters even when my fingers had gone all wrinkly. And even when they managed to pull me out of the castle, out of the water, there was always sand castles. The day before we married, I told Luke that I wanted a house on a beach and a dog. And a kid or two. None of those came true seven years later. That was a childish dream. Living next to the beach is so impractical if you really think about it. What's impractical about it? I don't know. It's not a bad thought to see you in a bathing suit every day. Hey! Maybe another time, love. This is a nice little interaction. All right, all right. We still have forever, don't we? He says nothing, only grabbing my hand and holding it tight as we spend the rest of the ride home in silence. I miss the sea. Sick and hovering over the loo at three in the morning, the picture I paint right now is hardly glamorous. A horribly fishy taste is left in my mouth as I throw up what I had for dinner, and I hate the acrid stench that fills the lavatory. The burning sensation at the back of my throat is of no help whatsoever. I can feel another wave of nausea come up on me when the door opens. Hana, what are you doing so early out of bed? Puking. I'm fine, love. I must have just eaten something bad. That's all I managed to say before vomiting again into the porcelain throne. Lovely. Just go back to bed, Luke. I'm going to clean up here. I refuse to look at him. I don't want him to see me like this. The last time I've had a horrible moaning retching into a toilet was during my college years being the life of the party. That's a... man, you've had a good track record. Thoughtless and shameless, I had thrown away months to frivolous merriment and pointless hookups. I didn't even retain any of the connections I had made from that time. Sure, they still know of me, and I still know of them, and we still do business from time to time. But I've lost touch with anyone who I didn't see on a daily basis. I hardly have any of the friends I had when I was still Hannah Evans. Teachers, fellow university students, drinking buddies, and old conquests like Jack. Jack? No, don't oh. touch me, sweetie. It's disgusting. Are you rubbing her back? Don't forget to hold her hair, too. I'm disgusting. You're sick, girl. It's okay. Luke sits down next to me on the toilet floor to hold my hair even as I cough up more fish. Aw, okay. He does still... That's... That's true love. If a guy's willing to hold your hair while you're vomiting into a toilet, you know you found the one. He wipes the vomit from the corner of my mouth and just... Stairs. Do I need to fire someone? I don't feel sick. <laughs> Do we have to fire our chef? But I don't feel sick. Weird. Just feeling a bit under the weather, dear. It's been unbearably hot as of late, hasn't it? I do wish it would rain. Are you sure it wasn't those sweets? 
Who told you not to eat those sweets? <laughs> this is quite clearly fish. Maybe. Well, don't laugh. Well, <laughs> I can't help if you make that sort of face. <laughs> he starts chuckling, and soon enough, he's in a fit of laughter. This scene happening next to a loo filled with sick just makes the whole thing bizarre, and it nearly makes me start giggling as well. I try to stifle it, though, as I smack him on the shoulder. I'm not making a face, Luke. Stop laughing. Shut up. <laughs> when he would not stop laughing, I let myself go as laughter bubbles from my own throat, and I forget whatever ill feelings plagued me. We are just husband and wife, laughing together at a funny face. The little things in life. I let myself go because I know that these moments will not last forever. But if I just know the terrible things that are to come for us, I would have wished with everything I have then and there that the laughter stayed. That's ominous. <laughs>